For the last two years, the monitor that I've been using for my YouTube content creation has been this bad boy, the LG 27 UD88. It's a great monitor, it's 4K, it's got an IPS panel with 100% sRGB color space coverage, but it's got one issue, it's not very good for gaming. So today I'm going to talk to you about how I'm not compromising anymore. Mmm, that's an exciting topic. <laughs> The LG 27UD88 has served me very well in my content creation journey over the last two years. The resolution means that there's a lot of space for stuff. <laughs> it's color accurate enough with 100% sRGB color space, which is the color space that internet content uses, so more than that is actually a bit redundant, so it's color accurate enough and it's just kind of covered all of the bases. It does have a couple of shortcomings though. It's got a peasant 60 hz refresh rate, which is not amazing for gaming, and because it's got a 4K resolution, even with the lower refresh rate, unless you have some kind of T-Rex graphics god of the gods, you really struggle to get games to run smoothly. So I really wanted to get my hands on a monitor that is really good at gaming, but can also cover all of the color grading stuff. Now this monitor is not only an amazing gaming display with 165 hertz refresh rate, a one millisecond response time, and a 1440p resolution, which is nice and sharp, but not super difficult to drive, but it's also got all of the content creation-y things that I want. Physically, when comparing these two monitors, they are very similar. They're both 27-inch displays with IPS panels that hit at least 100% sRGB color space. Uh, because of the 4K resolution on the LG monitor, it does have a higher pixel density, and you can tell, but the difference between 1440p and 4K at 27-inch isn't as big, in my opinion, as the difference between 1080p and 1440p. So this ViewSonic display is definitely still sharp enough. And with the lower resolution, you have the benefit of having games be easier to run. Now, when looking at the stands of these monitors, this is quite interesting because the LG monitor has the best stand that I've interacted with on a monitor up until this point. It doesn't have rotate, but it has all of the other adjustments that you'd want, and it can go pretty high. It, it's pretty good. But the stand on that ViewSonic display is next level. It does have a really big footprint on your desk, but it can go super high. Like, look at that. Its maximum height is quite a bit higher than the maximum height on the LG. And that's really nice for stuff like video editing and long hours at your desk because the LG monitor is a little bit too low, so I still have to look down at it. Whereas with the ViewSonic one, I can put it right in my eye level so it reduces neck strain and stuff like that. It is an amazing stand that's very heavy duty. If I shake the desk here, look at that! Look at that difference! And then, my favorite feature by far on the ViewSonic display is the fact that it's got a headphone hanger, which is, why do all monitors not have that? I know that that doesn't really tie into the display differences, but still, it's the ergonomics are there and it's great. Now, before we get into the differences when it comes to actually editing videos and stuff, let's talk about the gaming experience, because that's kind of the main reason that I wanted to upgrade to something like the XG270GQ with its, with its G-Sync and all that stuff. The gaming experience is remarkably different. I was playing Escape from Tarkov back to back on these two displays and when playing on the 60 hz 4K display it kind of felt a little bit like a slideshow, it was really stuttery and I actually had to drop the settings quite a lot to get a consistent 60 FPS. Whereas with the ViewSonic display I was getting about 100 frames per second average with higher settings and there it just feels so much more responsive, so much snappier, it feels significantly better. And not only that, but because the screen can actually go brighter, it's, it's really nice to play Tarkov on because Tarkov is a very dark game. Um, so the extra brightness does help out a lot. So big surprise there, right? The high-end 2020 gaming monitor is better for gaming than the two and a half year old not gaming monitor. <laughs> 
Now that we've spoken about literally everything else, let's get into what it's like to video edit on these two displays. Now going from the LG to the ViewSonic, you do lose a little bit of resolution, but considering that 4K at 27 inch always means you have to use Windows scaling, it means that you don't actually get that much more space in Premiere Pro while editing, like your timeline and stuff like that doesn't give you significantly more space on the LG display. And then when it comes to color accuracy, that's where it gets really interesting. I used my Tata Color Spider X to actually validate all of the manufacturer's claims on here. And according to this little monitor reviewer doohickey, the LG monitor covers 99% of the sRGB color space, whereas the ViewSonic monitor hits 100%. And that 1% <laughs> really means the world. But it does go further than that, because according to the Spider X, the ViewSonic display hits 97% of the DCI-P3 color space, which is like a super wide cinema color space, whereas the LG display only hits 81% of that. Now again, for an internet content creator, that difference doesn't really matter, but it shows that the ViewSonic display is quite a bit more color accurate. Although there is one place where the LG monitor does beat the ViewSonic monitor hands down, and that's when it comes to screen uniformity. So the maximum deviation in brightness on the ViewSonic monitor is about 16%, which isn't amazing, but it's, it's pretty good. Whereas on the LG monitor, the maximum deviation is 10%, which is, that's pretty good. Although bear in mind that this does vary from panel to panel. So you can have three of the same monitor and they'll potentially have different uh, panel uniformities. So in conclusion, the ViewSonic monitor is a pretty big step up. Not only is it a significantly better gaming display than the two and a half year old non-gaming display, but it's also more color accurate and I do actually prefer editing video on it, except for the fact that it doesn't have that 4K resolution. So with that, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel. I've got a pretty hectic mod video coming up on Saturday where I'm gonna take a Dremel to that little Acer pre-built. Uh, also check out all of my social media linked in the description below. And until the next video, bye-bye.